Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Brooklyn Tabernacle Daily Devotional Series. I'm Pastor Jim Cimbala, and we are going through the Book of Romans, and we have staked ourselves and built a tent right in Chapter 8 because it's so rich, it's so deep. Some have felt it's one of the most important chapters. These letters, of course, had no chapters to them, but as our Bible has been formed and given to us, chapter eight of Romans, oh my, so rich. So we've been learning, again, just to review, that this great salvation that we have through Jesus Christ, through faith in Christ, for those of us who have been born again and received the gift of eternal life, that's the whole point of the early chapters of Romans, that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, not even one. But God in his love has provided Jesus Christ as um, a sacrifice to die in our place, to shed his blood so that our sins could be forgiven and that we would be justified just as if we've never sinned as we put our faith in Jesus Christ. In God's sight, we are in Christ. Now, Romans 8 takes us, as we've been reviewing, on to the ongoing questions of life. How do you live in a way pleasing to this Father who did so much for us, gave his Son? How do you live pleasing when the flesh, the sinful nature, the selfish tendencies, call it what you will, the old man or woman, is so strong in us? And now we find out that it's not just Christ on the cross who died for us, but it's Christ living in us through the Holy Spirit who provides victory. And we can become the people that God intends us to be and live a life pleasing to him. So we read in chapter 8, verses 12 and 13. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation. Christians have an obligation. But it is not to the flesh, to the old Jim Simbola, to the old you. You don't owe that person a thing. Now that Christ has come, died for us, and now come to live in us through the Holy Spirit, it is not to the flesh our obligation to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit, capital S, you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live in a victorious way, in a way pleasing to God. So Paul's bringing out here, we have an obligation as Christians, but we don't owe anything to that old master ruler who we followed all our lives and who still wants to push himself in there and run the show. No, no. Our obligation, our debt, shall we say, is to live for God through the gift that he's given us who lives inside of us, even the blessed Holy Spirit. So this is the, the breaking point, the goodbye point to that domination of the old man, old woman. Sinful nature, flesh, sarx, S-A-R-X in the Greek. It's humankind, it's human nature apart from God. And it's no good all the time. Even when it pretends to try to be nice, there's a selfish motive in there. So how do we overcome it? Now, in this context, Paul is saying, we now, by the Spirit, capital S, can put to death the works of the flesh. And Christian history is replete with people who were never born again, but wanted to live for God. They had some desire to break these destructive habits. They tried everything. Long pilgrimages, longer prayers, fasting, wearing uh, rough clothing to punish their body. Oh, my goodness. And especially so for those who had become Christians and wanted truly to live a life pleasing the Lord, but did not know that it can't be done by the self. How could self defeat self? How can Jim Cimbala defeat Jim Cimbala? No, no. If through the Holy Spirit you put to death 
the works of the flesh. That's the only one who can give the willpower to say no when temptation comes. That's the only one. He's the only one, the Holy Spirit, who can make Christ so real to us that we get so occupied with him and we get so enamored with the sp things of the of, of eternity and the things of God and, and blessing to people that we forget ourselves. Oh, we forget ourselves. There's a great way to have victory over self is to forget self. Through these and various other ways, the Holy Spirit gives us um, the ability to put to death the, 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 the works of the flesh. Now, notice his son, God's son, is not only our acceptance, but also is our life. I only knew our acceptance when I was a kid. Christ died so I could be accepted by God. But I didn't know he wanted to be my life too. Get it? Life. Replacement. Replacement. No more Jim Simbla. Now Christ living through you and me. Your still personality will be, remain the same, but it'll be a flow of his life, which will be love. And love is the fulfillment of the law. Now, what about prayer, reading the word, daily devotions? They're not the secret. They're only the fence to protect that life of God, to give um, feeding, shall we say, to uh, that part of our nature where the Holy Spirit dwells so that the secular world and the things of the, of the senses don't overwhelm us and we forget who we are, who we really are. We're Christians. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. So even with this teaching, Paul is not doing away with other verses that say, pray, stay alert, be vigilant, be watchful. No, that's not done away with uh, by just saying, well, Christ is my life, it's all going to work out. No, we keep up a vigilance. They, they live together. They live together. You get it? We pray, we meditate, we spend time with the Lord. Why? So that we refocus on a daily basis on our need of His power, His love, His grace. So prayer doesn't keep me. <clears throat> Devotions don't keep me. Memorizing verses in the Bible don't keep me. Christ keeps me. And those things just help us to remember it, that without God, we can do nothing. So let's live not negatively. Let's live positive today. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Have a great day. God bless you.